You have been gifted with the most sophisticated mechanism in the universe that we know and you are handling it like it's a crude thing. So once you have a machine like this, it's important what kind of fuel is going into the system. When we say what kind of fuel, what kind of fuel is this machine designed for? As I said, there are many, many ways of looking at it. The simplest way is the elementary cannot from the mouth to the anal outlet, digestive process happens on many different levels. Now what kind of food is this digestive system designed for? <clears throat> if you look at the animal kingdom, largely in the world, there are carnivores and herbivores, veg uh, animals which eat vegetable ma material and those which eat meat. Between these two, carnivores and herbivores, there is a significant difference in the way their bodies are constructed and particularly their elementary canal, which is the digestive process. One basic thing is to start with, <clears throat> if you look at all the herbivorous animals, they have incisors in the front, cutting teeth and molars at the back which are grinding teeth. All the carnivorous animals have incisors, not so well developed molars and they have two extra pairs of canine. That is, if you want to eat meat in nature, to tear the meat and eat, you need this extra pair of teeth. Somehow, please check, you don't have them. And if you check the jaw moment of herbivores and carnivores, all the carnivores have only cutting action in their jaw moment. They have to just cut their small pieces and eat it. All the herbivorous animals have cutting and grinding action because you are supposed to grind your food. Why this design difference is, if you ever put a little bit of rice in your mouth and leave it there for a minute and close your eyes and observe, you will notice the rice will turn sweet, raw rice will turn sweet in your mouth because the carbohydrates are being converted into sugar right here in your mouth region because there is a certain enzyme called thallin in your saliva which every herbivorous animal has, which starts the digestive process in the mouth region itself. None of the carnivorous animals have this, so they only cut and eat, swallow their food. Herbivores are supposed to chew their food and eat. If you go little further, the length of the elementary canal, if you look at it, in all the carnivorous animals, it's only three times the length in all the carnivorous… in the, all the herbivorous animals, the length of the elementary canal is approximately five to six times the length of your body. Do you know what is the length of this pipe running through your body? No, oh, there are doctors. Hmm? I'm sorry? It is anywhere between twenty-four to thirty feet, which is approximately five to six times the length of your body. So in this this kind of elementary canal, if you put the duration of time that a particular food item takes to pass through, if you put raw meat into the system, it will take anywhere between seventy to seventy-two hours to pass through the system. If you cook… if you put cooked meat into the system, it will take forty-eight to fifty-two hours to pass through the system. If you put cooked vegetarian meals, it will take twenty-four to thirty hours to pass through the system. If you put an uncooked vegetable, it will take twelve to fifteen hours to pass through the system. If you put a fruit, it will take a half to three hours to pass through the system. If you keep raw meat outside in summer, for seventy-two hours what happens? Similar things happen in your body or in other words, enormous amount of rotting process happens and excessive bacterial activity is taking… Uh, taking place within the body. Keeping these bacterial levels lower in the body becomes the biggest function that the body is functioning and doing right now, which makes one… I see that with regular uh, lunch, dinner, these everywhere, either coffee or worse, coke is being served because without that, most people will fall asleep on the table because that is the nature of food that we are consuming. The level of inertia that this food is creating is such, now all the doctors, particularly West are saying, minimum eight hours you must sleep. <laughs> sleep is not a requirement in the body. 
restfulness is a requirement in the body. When I say restfulness, right now I am standing, walking and speaking, but if you check my pulse on an empty stomach, you will see my pulse will be somewhere between thirty-six to forty-four. Right now, it may be in the range of around fifty. If body is going at an easier pace, the amount of rest that it demands in terms of shutting down will come down considerably. It's like you have a car which needs fifteen days in a month, it needs to be serviced. You could as well walk, <laughs> ride a bicycle, you know. If it needs one day in a month service, all right. If it needs fifteen days servicing, servicing in one month's time, it's not worth having. That is how one will begin to feel about their own body. When it needs too much servicing, you wonder why the hell you're here. That thought will very easily come when you… when the body pulls you down, people will wonder, why am I here? What am I doing? These questions will come. Business women who have uh, big plans in their life, the most important thing is have a vibrant and alert body which is willing to do what you want, which is willing to stay awake, which is willing to wake up when you want, it doesn't fall asleep in the middle of something. <laughs> It's very, very important to have an alert and agile body. Now, nourishment problems are there. So, living in a desert, if I just depend on vegetables, after all everything has to come from somewhere, I may not have enough nourishment, that problem is there. So, if nourishment is a problem, if we have to eat some kind of non-vegetarian, the best way to eat it is what is furthest away from us, in the evolutionary scale, we must eat that. The closer they are to us, the more information to process. When I say more information to process, right now you understand, you need to understand this that your body is forming itself, the way it is forming itself, only because of a certain level of memory and information that it carries. When I say memory and information, people think memory and information is in their mind. No, what your mind carries is a minuscule. A body carries a trillion times more memory than you can imagine. For example, Michelle, do you remember your great-great-great-great-grandmother, how she looked? No. You don't remember how your great-great-great-great-grandmother looked, but her nose is sitting on your face right now because your body remembers. Your body remembers how your forefathers were a million years ago, it is not forgotten. You might have forgotten, but your body remembers. There's a phenomenal amount of memory in every cell in this body. And similarly, the more evolved a particular creature is, the more complex it has become, the more difficult it is for the system to absorb and make it a part of itself. So suppose uh, you eat an animal which has emotions, the moment you consume an animal with emotions, the complexity of information in that animal is such that it will not integrate easily into our system. If you eat an animal which does not have so much thought and emotion, its ability to retain its own structure is very minimal and it integrates itself into our body as a part of ourselves very easily. So when we consume something, this is the fundamental criteria that we want to eat something which is a simple life. Without consuming some life, you cannot exist here. Whether it's a plant, vegetable, fruit, animal, everything is life. Now the idea is to consume a simpler life which has less capability of thought and emotion. The more capability it has, your ability to integrate that will become less or in other words, the nature of that animal will start manifesting within ourselves in some ways. It is not that if you eat a camel, you will become a camel tomorrow morning. But over a period of time, a little camelistic trends can come. So, unless when somebody is extraordinarily physically active, they are able to manage this to some extent. As physical activity comes down, how consciously you eat makes a world of difference. A human being need not be serviced for eight hours a day. If only 
if he or she eats properly, the kind of food substance which easily integrates into the system, the kind of food substance that will not create inertia but it will create dynamism, the kind of food substance which will not need to stay in the body for long periods of time, something that passes through the system quickly. Carnivorous animals have a short elementary canal because meat passes through the system slowly. Herbivores have a long elementary canal because vegetable matter passes through the system very quickly. And we have a long elementary canal and the purpose of a long elementary canal is a more complex process is possible. When a more complex process is possible, what it means is the quality and the nature of the food in some way impacts us in character, in the way we are, in the way we think, emote and behave within ourselves and around us. So how consciously we consume food and how conscious we are as to how food behaves within us. If you are conscious enough, if something appears in front of you, you will simply know whether to eat it or not eat it. If that kind of awareness is not there, one has to have function by information as to different foods, how they behave and they do not behave. I was speaking to a medical group in, uh, in United States and uh, I told them, the way America is eating right now, if you change the way you're eating, you can bring down sixty percent of the incidence of cancer in this country, simply if you change the way you're eating because you're eating food which is one… on an average about forty-five days old. In the yogic culture, if anything is cooked, within one and a half hours you must consume it. From the stove straight to the plate, <laughs> always. I'm sure in this culture also it was like that till recently. So, as you keep the food and it starts uh, deteriorating. If you eat deteriorating food and then you're wondering why your own body cells are working against you, that cannot be helped. We are spending billions of dollars in research for the ailments that we have created. We need to understand this, every human cell, every cell in this body is essentially programmed for health. But right now, seventy percent of the ailments on the planet or chronic or in other words, they're self-created. There are infectious diseases which are an invasion from another organism. That has to be dealt with medicine. All the chronic ailments, whatever it is, is manufactured from within. Why would our own body manufacture ailment for us? Simply because without understanding the fundamentals of how it functions and one important part of it is what we consume and how we consume. If we change this one aspect as to what we're consuming and how we consume it, health could be a natural process for most people. I would say sixty to seventy percent of the population will never get into health if only there's a little more conscious way of eating on this planet.